Hello everyone, welcome to another video in the Geospatial Centroids video tutorial series. My name is Dan Carver, I'm the technical manager at the Geospatial Centroid. And in this lesson today, we're going to be covering how you can convert CSVs to spatial objects in R. So uh, to do this, or <laughs> we're gonna cover uh, converting these things to the spatial feature, CSVs, we're going to talk a lot about the differences between SP and SF objects. These are the two spatial libraries for handling uh, polygon-based data, points polygon lines. Uh, and then we're also just going to showcase some of the data wrangling capabilities of R uh, if you get messy data with flat long values, which you will eventually. So with that, let's just jump into it. So. Like the previous lesson, uh, I really like outlining the tasks in RStudio just with headers uh, before starting them up. So today we're going to be looking at specific libraries. We're using the base directory as a relative path. Um, I have some uh, some lat long data from squash wild relatives that we're going to be using. So there's a link for that. We're going to look at evaluating with SP and SF, talk about some of the differences, and then write out that file as a shapefile uh, so that you can use in other programs. And then for some, uh, it's not necessarily messy data, but some less straightforward data, we're going to be going to the City of Fort Collins uh, open data portal and downloading their uh, small business maps. So what locations are open during the pandemic, what they're offering. And in order to get this into a, a nice clean format to use in R, we have to do a little bit of prep with the data. So let's jump over to the code and check this out. So again, these files are available for you. Uh, you can download them and follow them along if you want, or you can engage with the material on your own time. Um, always a good habit to describe what you're doing and put some contact information up at the top. We're going to be using three different geospatial specific libraries today. So there's SP, SF, and TMAP. I already have these installed, so if you don't, you need to do that, but um, you can use this install packages function to do so. And then I'm setting my base directory to a file folder location on the computer. And if we were to look at that really quickly, um, we can see that we have uh, data. So I have my two CSVs already downloaded and loaded in there. Um, outputs is where we're going to be writing out information. And then the SRCS or SRC is sort for source, and that's where our code is sticking. So um, that's all set up and ready to go. So we'll come back to R. So I'll punch this in as a variable, it's my first one, and that just points to the main file folder for this project. Now for this squash wild relative data set, um, I chose it because I use it in a, another tutorial that exists. So let's pull that up. Um, this is on my GitHub page. It's an introduction to uh, spatial data in R. We cover many of the similar topics that we're talking about today, but in a little bit more detail. Um, and this is something we run as part of our software carpentry trainings with the NASA Develop data. So um, GitHub's nice because you can store data up here, you can download it, you can view it as a raw data set, um, and save this as a CSV. So it's really pretty flexible and a great resource to get used to using. So this one, as you can tell, it's got uh, lat long already listed for us. Uh, it's a clean data set from a publication, so it's, it's ready to roll. We'll go back to R. Okay, so it's a CSV, we have it downloaded. So let's read it in and then just view it. Um, we can see we have lat long values. We don't know what type it is, but that's okay. 
It's uh, just under 1,200 records long. And then it looks like, you know, we probably have a complete data set. So it's nice and clean, ready to work with. I can close that out. And then now we want to take the CSV with lat long data and create point data sets out of it. So we'll start off with SP. And SP, this is a, a library. We loaded it, but you can call functions from it by doing SP dot dot. Um, this is the first spatial library uh, brought in R, so there's still a lot of dependencies um, with it, other libraries that are reliant on it. Uh, but it is kind of getting phased out by SF, and I think hopefully at the end of this content you'll see a couple reasons why. So when we create a, a SP object, in this case we're going to want to create a spatial points data frame. So let's just look at that. Copy and So spatial points, data frame, requires coordinates, a proj4 string, uh, and then data. So you can have points or you can have a data frame. Since we have information stored with these lat long locations, we're gonna include this data as well. So get this out of the way. Um, so we need coordinates, we need data, and we need a proj4 string. Uh, for coordinates, what you need to be careful of is, is you assign basically x, y. So we're used to talking about lat long, which is the north, south, and then east, west uh, perspective. But all her, in, in R at least, you want to provide it in an x, y format. So this is your x dimension longitude, your y dimension latitude. So we're going to subset out of our CSV that we ran in, our latitude and longitude columns, and we're just going to call them by the names. So if we just take a quick peek at the coordinates, you can see we maintain these negative values, the so Western Hemisphere, and then positive values, are so Northern Hemisphere. But that gets fed into our coordinates. Okay. We need a CRS, or coordinate reference system, and to get one of those, we can pull what's called a, a proj4 string. And I really like using this website called Spatial Reference. Um, these are unprojected lat long, collected in the WGS84 um, datum. So, they have a lot of different ways that you can pull this, but we'll just grab the proj4 string. So I copy this and I brought it back into R. And what that means is that I can save that as a string, but we need to create a specific CRS object out of it. So we have to run from the SP library a function called CRS. And what that what we end up with is a specific class of data. So this is uh, a requirement. We can't just provide a string here. We have to provide a CRS object for this. So it's a common hangup. And then data is easy. We just throw it a data frame, which we already have from reading in our CSV. So let's run that. Great. No errors. Check out the class. It's a spatial points data frame as we expected. And then using a really helpful library called tmap we can just create a quick plot of this um, yeah so there it is there's no reference material so this doesn't help us that much um, but these are spatially referenced objects projected onto a map okay let's just clear that for now so that's working with SP. Really not hard, pretty straightforward. And then let's look at SF. Uh, so the SF library, uh, most of their functions, I'm still trying to get a handle as to why this is exactly. 
are they start with this uh, st so like all their spatial operations maybe I don't know I shouldn't project what it is but there's a lot of their functions are st dash something or underscore so in this case to convert in an object from one data type to another we can use this st as sf um, let's look at that documentation really quick st as fs convert for an object to an sf object perfect so we can pass data frame chords so on and so on um, so there's a lot of extra information here as to how to use the function that you can dig into. The important thing for us is that our input is our D1. And then this is where the differences start. So we call this operation chords. That's one of the parameters. And since it already has this feature in here, um, you can just pass it column names directly. So it, it's no, it's going to pull from that component here. And in this sense, SF starts to function a lot more like dplyr. And that's kind of the, the true at every single level. Um, so if you're used to piping and if you're used to dplyr uh, structuring and how to index columns there, it's going to be very natural doing that with SF. So that's nice. And then here, rather than providing a CRS object, we can uh, very conveniently just pass a reference number. So to check back to our spatial reference website. Uh, yeah, so this is the EP, EPSG number for WGS84. Uh, so that's a, a unique key for this projection. So rather than having to pull this whole Proj4 value, we can simply just pull this number, uh, which is pretty helpful. Um, so let's run that class. This returns uh, two different options, SF and a data frame. And then if we plot it, we get much the same plot as before. Um, not much you can derive from this plot, but that data is out there, it is spatially referenced data. So, two different ways to get to the same process. Uh, but let's look at these in a little bit more detail. Uh, so if we call the class on our SP object, so it's points SP and points SF for SF object, um, we could see it's a sp spatial point data frame. If we try to view this, we'll see that this is a something of a complex object. So it's an S4 object, and then data is one of the components that's stored within this data set. So if you want to work with the data associated with the object, you actually have to call using this S4 indexing the at sign rather than the dollar. Um, you have to call at data. So this returns what is effectively a data frame that's associated with the spatial points data frame. Um, I often like this at times, but it's because you can maintain your lat long value in your data set. And that's, that can be really helpful for uh, like quick filtering or, you know, if you know everything less than, or you only want points uh, east of 100 degrees west, you can do numerical filtering. You don't need any spatial operations to do that. So I find it can often be advantageous to have the data frame with the lat long values in there uh, for that type of filtering. If we look at the SF though, again, there's it's an SF object, but it's also a data frame. And what that really means is that it took those lat long values and stored them as geometry features within the data. So because it's an SF object, it knows how to read this geometry, um, but because it has that data, it's stored 
as a data frame. You can use any type of filtering or functions that you would on a normal data frame uh, with no concerns of them not working correctly. Um, so yeah, you lose access to the lat long or at least convenient access to the lat long values. Um, but in doing so, you get a lot of confidence and you can use dplyr on SF objects. So again, it may seem like minor differences, but you're you come to a point where you need both of these. So it's good to know why they differ and then use cases for each. To write out the actual files, uh, we're just going to rely on the SF library. So SP doesn't have a built-in function to write out files. If you wanted to do that, you would need to go to our gdal and then write OGR and you can provide, you look up the documentation of how to do this. So you can, um, SP requires our gdal so it'll be loaded and installed on your computer. Um, but it's, I like that SF has this kind of built in. And it makes it pretty straightforward. So with ST write, we just have to pass it a um, an object. So this is going to be our SF feature here. And then we're going to say where to save it, and we're providing a file extension. Uh, the function is actually going to look for, recognize that file extension, and then apply the correct driver to um, make sure the file is written in a specific format. So you don't have to write it to an SHP, you can write it to lots of different stuff. Uh, same with that rgdal method too. So if we just look at some of their examples here, um, so yeah, interpretation varies with driver. But here's a full list of formats. And it's using GDAL on the back end too. So it's not anything unique to the library. Um, it's all the drivers that are connected with GDAL. Um, but by and large, you don't, you don't really need to know about that too much. Uh, understand that there's, there's a lot going on to make this happen. But what's important for you is probably that it works. So we wrote that out. Let's see in the file folder if it showed up. Great. So here are um, the four necessary files connected to your SHP. Um, so you could throw that into Q or ARC or whatever you're interested in. Um, lots of other options. Now returning back to our code. Here, if we want to write out our SP object, we actually have to transfer it. We have to change it. And we're going to use that same function that we used on our CSV. Uh, so ST as SF. Right? Uh, so that gets converted within here. And then we can write it out as a shape file. Um, so we can't write out an SP object directly. We have to convert it to uh, an SF feature. So we'll pull up that file folder, and we can see that that second object got saved as well. Um, the, the data behind it is a little bit larger because those lat long values are stored as columns within the data set, whereas in our SF object, they're stored as a geometry feature, um, not columns in the data set. So, but besides that, they're the same. Okay, so like I said, our input data set are, in this case, again, because this was pulled from, excuse me, uh, a publication. This is clean data analysis ready, ready to go. Um, more often than not, you're not going to be so lucky. You're going to have to do some work yourself to work with your data. So this is a really cool website. Um, I live in Fort Collins and I appreciate it. I, look to it quite often but let's go back to our browser if so for Collins they have an open data um, 
website and get a little off track. Let me grab that URL again. So if we punch this in, this is a search that I did uh, not too long ago for the most popular uh, open day files. And the one that came up was support for Collins businesses during COVID-19. So if we look at this website, uh, it's got a lot of information about what you can do, how you can search, how to use this page. And then if they can map it, they often do. So here's a really nice uh, kind of simple web map that we could definitely recreate in R if we wanted. Uh, it shows information about the locations uh, and then yeah, comment. So if you're interested in helping out some people who live in the community, you can support small businesses by visiting these places. That's basically the message. So visualization tools, and then you can also search for uh, different parameters. So automotive, breweries, so on and so on. What's really nice about this is that you can go to the data source. So they provide access to all this data on their open data site. And you can export that data. And there's a couple different options, CSV, KMLs, and shapefile. Obviously, if you wanted a shapefile, you can just get it from here. You don't have to do for this whole conversion in R. One point to note on that is that if you do download the CSV, uh, that's only one file that stores all the information that you need. You don't have to you know, zip up the shape file to move it around. So it, even if you want it to go to this shape file in the end, it could be convenient to keep it as a CSV for the time being. So I've already got this downloaded, so I'm not gonna pull it. Um, but let's just jump back into R and take a look at it. So again, it's stored in my data folder. So let's just read that in and take a quick look at it. Yep, there's the name of the businesses, different websites, on and on and on. And then here's what we got. So GPS location, it's stored referencing the geometry type. Uh, parentheses, long, lat, space to differentiate between the two. So this is really similar to the the structure is how SF objects hold their um, features, but when we write it out as a CSV, it's not saved as a geometry feature because CSVs can't hold geometry features. So this all gets converted to text. Uh, so we can't read it and use it as a geometry feature as is. We have to kind of translate it back to lat long. Um, in order to do that, we need to work on cleaning and substituting information from here. So to do this, we're gonna load another library called tidyr, uh, just for one function, but it's a really helpful one. And if we jump back to our data, if we start scrolling through here, we can see that some of these locations don't have a GPS location. So let me just drag this column and very inefficiently run it over. And I can see that it's um, row number 31. So now that I know that, I can index our GPS location position 31. And I can see that these blank values are just stored as blank characters. So they're not NA values, they're not null values. They're character values with no information stored in it. So in order to select and get rid of those, um, we're gonna use some indexing where we take our data frame uh, and we're gonna filter it by asking for all locations that are not equal to uh, the result here, this empty character string. We need to do this, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but we can't, both SP and SF will not allow 
uh, features that do not have uh, lat long values to be converted into a spatial feature. Kind of makes sense, right? Um, so we're going to drop some information here. Let's just see how much. So we're called the dim dimension on D2. There's 486 features. And when we drop all the rows that are uh, equal to this, keeping all the rows that are not, Four fifty-five, so that's like thirty-one features that were dropped uh, that didn't have lat long values. So we can't represent those um, elements in our spatial features um, because they don't have spatial information. So let's look again at our D two, our lat long value, and then see what we need to take care of. So there are potentially three different things. This point and then a space we need to get rid of. Um, we need to deal with these parentheses on the front and back. And then we need a means of differentiating the longitude and latitude value. So we're going to split out these values into two different columns. Um, R is really proficient at utilizing um, and manipulating strings and whatnot. So there's just a base function sub where you can provide a pattern, a, a location, and then a replacement value. So we're gonna select all the, their pattern is point space from the D2 GPS location, and then we're gonna replace that with an empty character string, so nothing basically. Um, but it will remove that, it's like deleting it. And then we're gonna reassign that to GPS location. So reassigning these variables, it, maybe it's a little sloppy. Um, I just do it a lot so I don't have to create new variable features. So if we rerun that, our table should update here. We can see that we got rid of that point, which is great. And now we need to deal with these parentheses. Um, and as this is a, um, this string replacement is something you will need to look up when you start dealing with it. So I had to pull in these square brackets to force it to look for this um, open parentheses. It was throwing me an error otherwise. And I think it's, I don't have the exact answer. Um, but it's, it's not always going to be a walk in the park with string replacement, but there is great information online um, for how to work with it. So again, we're effectively deleting these things by just dropping, um, not replacing it with anything. So let's replace the front parentheses. Awesome, it dropped. Um, because I'm using this view function, this table is reactive, so when I make these changes, I can see it here. If you were just looking at the data frame, you would need to rerun that. Um, so I dropped the first one. Now let's drop the second one. Cool. So now we have longitude, latitude with a space in between. So that's looking good. And this is where we pull in the tidy R. And we're gonna call the separate function we're going to throw data at it, D2, point to a column. We're going to separate it into longitude and latitude, and then we're going to separate on a space. So I created a new object here because this is going to be the one we're working with for our next step. So let's view it, take a double check. So we've replaced that column at GPS location with a latitude and latitude, um, incorrectly spelled version, and so on. So let's run this function. So this is from Tmap. It changes the map view from uh, static to interactive so we can get a little bit better view of it. Uh, 
to create an SP object, we have to build that coordinate set again. And if we take a look at our longitude column here, it's a character. Uh, these need to be numeric. So we have to go through the extra step of creating a uh, numeric version of them. So I'm assigning this to longitude two and latitude <laughs> two um, in the data frame, just for an example. So now when we look at our, our D3, we could see that there's a different version, but these are numeric, whereas these are character vectors. So with that in mind, we don't need to create a new data frame. We can reference the coordinates from the object within here, uh, but we do have to call it from that object. So it's not as uh, fancy as SF in that sense. But let's call it and then we can look at the map. And I realized that my face was in the way when we were looking at those other maps, so my apologies, but you weren't missing much. So now, much like the website here, we have a nice little interactive map that shows the tabular data associated with these points. Um, you'd have to work on this since this is so big, it's uh, messing up the visualization of the rest of these. Like it just prints it all to the right side. Um, so we'd consider dropping that column if needed. Um, but yeah, messy lat long data, not messy, but reorganize the lat long data and we got it into an SP object. Now for SF, again, it's a little bit simpler. We can just provide D3. We could point it to the right columns, provide the CR CRS, and it's actually going to convert those lat long columns to numeric automatically. So that's good or bad. Um, it's convenient. Uh, and then the result is approximately the same. Uh, where we have a nice little map where we can view uh, all the small businesses of Fort Collins. So College Harmony. This is the uh, kind of industrial district, breweries all over the place. Horse and Dragon. Mountain Fermentary. Yeah. So pretty cool. And with that, uh, I will say, let's check back at the objectives. So we've worked with a couple different CSVs, made them into spatial features. We've talked a little bit about the differences between SP and SF. Uh, the important thing to know is that you will have to use both of them from time to time. You'll probably develop a preference, um, but if you work with raster data, uh, you need SP objects. If you work with dplyr a lot, it's more convenient to work with SF objects. Uh, and then we just showcased some of the power of R for data wrangling and cleaning coordinates, as well as producing these interactive maps. So I hope you enjoyed this and looking forward to seeing you on the next one.